بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دا ٹاپک آف دس ویڈیو از رائٹ بنڈر برانچ بلاک اینڈ لیفٹ بنڈر برانچ بلاک آن ای سی جی سو ایز وی نو دیٹ اے اسٹینڈرڈ ٹویلو لیڈ ای سی جی ایز گاٹ سکس لم لیڈس اینڈ سکس پریکارڈیل لیڈس اینڈ دا پریکارڈیل لیڈس آر فرام وی ون ٹو وی سکس سو اف وی فرسٹ discuss the right bundle branch block let me first discuss the main features or the salient features that are characteristic of a right bundle branch block first uh, the QRS complex it should be more than 120 milliseconds and secondly uh, there there is an secondary r wave in v1 if suppose this is v1 and this is the initial r wave in case of right bundle branch block it's followed by a second r wave and this is also called as rs r dash pattern and the third thing Uh, present in right bundle branch block is uh, secondary T wave changes like this is an RSR wave and T wave inversion suppose this is lead 1 V1 so here is our complex a QRS complex with RSR pattern and here is the secondary T wave inversion and the third thing that will be present in case of R baby in lead V4 to V6 and lead 1 and AVL these are also called the lateral leads in these leads there will be slurring of the s wave for example this is a normal qrs complex and in case of rbb if we look at uh, the lateral leads in 1 avl or v4 v5 or v6 it will be something like this so this slurring of s wave it usually is confused with an st depression but actually it's not it's a slurred up stroke of the s wave uh, so these were all the main features of right bundle branch block so this is a 12 lead ecg that manifest right bundle branch block and just focus on lead v1 as we have already mentioned that the duration of qrs complex it's more than 120 milliseconds and a secondary t wave inversion is also present here and there is an rsr dash pattern which is not there in a normal ecg and in books it's also mentioned that this qrs complex that we have labeled as an rsr this one is called this limb is called the left ear of the rabbit and this one is called the right ear of the rabbit so characteristically in case of right bundle branch block the right rabbit ear is taller than the left rabbit ear and similarly coming to the lateral leads lead v4 v5 and v6 there is slurring of the s waves and similarly in leads 1 and avl we can also appreciate the slurring of the upstroke of the s wave and actually these are not st depressions and no one should confuse them with ischemia 
now coming to left bundle branch block again the first feature is the QRS complex width and it should be more than 120 milliseconds as it was in case of right bundle branch block and before proceeding I just want to stop here for a moment and uh, discuss why the QRS complex is broad in case of right bundle branch block or left bundle branch block so actually what happens is that uh, in a normal heart uh, when the electrical impulse leaves the AV node and then bundle of his it distributes into right bundle and the left bundle both the anterior and the posterior uh, fascicles of the left bundle so uh, it depolarizes both sides the right ventricle and the left ventricle simultaneously so as it this process is simultaneous so both the ventricles depolarize almost at the same time and less time is consumed that's why QRS duration is re normally less than 120 milliseconds but in case of a right bundle branch block or a left bundle branch block one of the bundle branch is as it's blocked so it takes time it either becomes from the ref left side to the right side or from the right side to the left side and as it takes time so that's why this time manifests as the broadening of this QRS complex so now coming back to the left bundle branch block features first the QRS more than 120 milliseconds and uh, secondly it, as we all know that there is in a normal ECG there are in if we focus on the lateral leads like V5, V6 and 1 AVL there is a small Q wave just before the R wave and actually this makes a QRS complex and it's something like this this one is the small Q wave and this one is the R wave I'm discussing the lateral leads in case of left bundle branch block and you must know that this small Q wave is formed by the depolarization of the interventricular septum that is depolarizing from the left to the right side but as our left bundle is blocked so this Q wave will be absent and it will be like this and as there is broadening of the QRS so it will become like something like this this M pattern or the broadened R wave they are usually present in case of a left bundle branch block in lead 1 AVL and V5 and V6 it may be present only uh, this uh, characteristic M pattern might be present only in lead 1 and AVL and maybe somewhat different just like this in sorry just like this in a lead V5 or 6 well so one of the uh, characteristic features is this prominent R wave in lead V5, V6 and 1 and AVL and in case of the precordial leads V1 if we look at V1 or V2 there will be no secondary R wave and there will be deep S waves in lead 1 and V1 and lead V2 and these will be followed by a concordant sorry a discordant 
elevation of the ST segment and the T waves. The concordant means that it's in the same side and the discordant means it's in the opposite side. So in case of bundle branch blocks, usually the ST segment is especially in left bundle branch block the ST segment and the T waves are discordant to the QRS complex. Just say for example in lead V1 and V2 as we know that there are deep S waves and no secondary R waves. So the after this there will be ST segment and it will be somewhat elevated and after that it's followed by a T wave and it's also upright and in case of lead 1 AVL and lead V5 and lead V V6 the QRS complex is there is a prominent R wave which is notched and the ST segment as it has to be discordant it will be something like this and similarly the T wave also inverted so it will be the complex will be something like this so these are some salient features of a left bundle branch block these are the examples of left bundle branch block in lead v1 v2 there are deep s waves in lead v5 v6 absence of the initial small q waves and broadening of the r wave similarly characteristic a notch that is present in lead 1 and lead AVL and similarly if we focus the direction of the ST segment and the T wave it's in the opposite direction of the QRS axis just focus on lead 1 lead AVL here it it's discarded so it's upwards the ST segment and the T wave and in this case it's downwards so these STT changes should not be confused with the ischemic changes so this is all from the ECG criteria and the discussion of right bundle branch block and the left bundle branch block. Thank you very much.